On this episode of AC Design of the Garage, I'm going to show you how to TIG weld thin sheet metal like a pro, even if you're a beginner. Several tips and tricks all the way through to the end of the video. Coming up. All right, real quickly, we're going to go over what we're going to be using in this video. This is my old Millermatic Synchrowave 250DX I've had for 100 years. It's paid for itself over and over. One thing I kind of regret that I didn't do back when I bought it is I kind of wish I had got the pulse set up in it. It's got all the blank outs for it, and I guess you could go back and do it now, but I just didn't get the pulse feature because I didn't really know that much about it when I bought it. But it is a water-cooled machine. I really like it. Uh, as for doing sheet metal, I've never scratch arc or lift arc uh, TIG on sheet metal like the spot welding. I suggest if you're going to do much of it, you need to get a foot pedal. I think it'd be easier. Not to say you can't do it with the other way, but I think it's a lot easier with the foot pedal. Running 100% argon as usual on this. I'm running, uh, as for my CFH, I have a Jazzy 10 right now on a Furic Cup and gas lens, 3 32nd tungsten. I'm going to show you how to sharpen it and stuff. But this gas lens I really like, but I'm I'm gonna put my FUPA 12 Furic cup on it because it's a clear Pyrex one and it's just better for the FEMA. But you don't need as much gas gas coverage on like mild steel and stuff. That's like stainless and inconel. But I'm gonna I'll just tell you I'm gonna be running about 25 on on it over there. Normally I run about 18 to 20 with this one. But just if you see it, that's what I'm gonna be running. Uh I didn't have a project going right now, so I went over to tractor supply and Spent way too much money on a 12 by 24 piece of 22 gauge steel, but we'll see if we can get a good video. Several of you guys have asked about a TIG weld. I've done the MIG welding videos, and I'll link them in the description below, or probably just put a card up top over here, and uh, you can go back for the MIG weld and thin how to do that and stuff. As for my filler rod, I'm going to be running ER70 S-2. I like the Blue Demon stuff. We bought this 10 pound. This is a uh, 045. Just what I use is pretty thin because I will show you when we're fitting this up and stuff. On the TIG weld, you want as minimal gap as you can get. If you can get it perfect and do a fusion tack, it's a whole lot easier to grind and hammer and stuff. So if you can do it without filler, but the 045 is what we're going to be using. Uh, any of you guys wonder what kind of shield I use? This is a great hood. The only thing I like about it is the, the headgear piece. But this is the Miller Digital Infinity. It's got the big glass, so I can see. But it has all kind of, all kind of neat features. But yeah, this thing's got this weird. I don't know. It's kind of hot, and I don't care for it. I guess I just like the old style, the headgear stuff. But it's not bad, I don't guess. But I will say this is a pretty heavy shield, and after a while, if you do a lot of bench work welding and stuff, it get a little rough on your neck i'll link all this stuff that i'm using in the description and stuff so you guys can pick it up if y'all are interested in it but there's a lot of different companies making these gas lens i'm i'm a furic guy i like michael's stuff he's local here in more north carolina i try to support all my local guys but and his stuff's really awesome all right i'm gonna show you how to go over here and sharpen your tongues and this is not bad but that's one thing about tig welding you got the drill in your head if you dip it go sharpen it Go over and grab my little TIG box here. The thing's full. Y'all want to write these down if you guys ever want to do any filming. Now, this is I'm shooting on my cell phone. It's the Samsung Galaxy S21. These are all my settings in pro mode, ISO, speed, uh, white balance, all that. That's what I've found to work for me. It's hard to find anybody to show you how to actually shoot an arc shot. But if you guys want to try, and it'll help you out. You know, if you're welding, trying to learn how to do this, that way you can see where you're making your mistakes while you're welding. But I just got this little box here. I keep my my different gas lenses and TIG fingers and stuff. But yeah, here's the this is the FUPA 12. It's got this cool little guard on it. I think it's titanium. We'll get these two swapped out here and get the sharpening the tungsten. All right, the way you install like the FUPA, the Jazzies are pretty cool. They just uh, spin on there, threaded, like a ceramic type. These work really good. But to run the FUPA, you have to put these little red high temp O-rings on it. That's what holds it on. You slide it on. And uh, 
just wet the inside with spit, whatever. If you want it where it'll slide on good, just put that in there. And basically all it does, you just kind of put it on and turn it. And that's it. That's the FUPA 12. And now we're going to take a, our tungsten over here and sharpen it. I don't think I said before, I'm using the 2% thoriated, the red. I kind of like it. I'm old school. I still got a lot of it left. But, but it seems to do. I can do aluminum and steel and everything with it. But I like to have, now as for my aluminum, I like to have a separate one to keep. Because when you're welding aluminum, sometimes it pops up and gets stuff on it. You got to clean it and stuff. But I try to keep all my aluminum, my brushes and everything separate. But let's get up here and grind this bad boy. All right, when you're grinding them, I want to... I like to get mine up like this. Now you do have to be careful grinding this way because if you get too much angle on it, it will grab it because the wheel's spinning down this way. But what I do is just put it on here and just uh, get it about the angle I want. And you don't have to push real hard on it because you don't want this turning red because if it starts turning red and getting really hot, uh, you get contaminants. It opens it up for contaminants coming to it. So just barely lightly put it on and twist it and touch and twist it and touch and twist it and touch till you get it. Let it cool a little bit, and that's how we're going to do it. That's it. Not bad looking tip right there. You never want to grind it around. You want the lines going up and down so as the gas comes out, it, it don't start swirling and all this stuff. So you want you want your grind marks going up and down, not in circles. One good thing about when you run the bigger gas lenses, they have a rule of thumb. I have to look on there and see what it is, but you get more stick out because you got so much gas coverage. But I'm going to show you about where I'm going. I'm probably going to give about, that's almost a half inch of stick out. Just so we can see when we're we're filming and stuff. So I'm going to get my coupons cut up real quick out of this and uh, we'll get going at it. All right, we're going to clean our samples up. Sorry about the noise. Living down the south in the middle of the summer, it's really hot, and I got air conditioning, so I'm going to use it. But anyway, we're going to use just some lacquer thinner, uh, acetone's good or anything, just to make sure it's good and dry. And, you know, I'll evaporate it before you strike art, because that stuff is highly flammable. But the tip to TIG weld, or any kind of metal, the cleaner you can get it, the better. So we're going to wipe all this down and, and off with uh, lacquer thinner. And then I'm gonna come here on even because this looks like brand new fresh metal, and which it is, but it still has a slight mill scale. This is not cold roll, but we're gonna take a little grinder and just grind back the mill scale off of this because you want your wells to be as perfect as you can possibly get them and can't get it too clean or too nice. So we're gonna clean these up real quick. Some of that sharpie but you can see how dirty this this metal is i mean it's it's pretty filthy I'll lay them on my gloves because i'm gonna uh, wipe this place off where we're gonna be welding too yeah this stuff's nasty If you guys are enjoying this type of content stuff, make sure you leave it down in the comments. And if there's anything you guys would like to see 
I want to learn to do I'll, I'll try to do some videos and stuff on this video here was suggested by a lot of you guys wanting to see the the TIG welding on the thin sheet metal and stuff so we're going to do what we can this is y'all's channel just as much as it is mine if uh whatever i can help you guys out with so drop in the comments below make sure if you're getting good value out of this to hit that subscribe button helps the channel out a whole lot and make sure your post notifications are on because a lot of times it's, you don't see this stuff if you don't have that that bell on make sure you click it to the all section and uh like share all that good stuff the more we get it out the more stuff we can do for you guys also i like to clean my filler rod too i mean this stuff's pretty clean it comes in that nice little plastic box but you can see here just clean your filler rod and i cut mine in half these are i guess these are 36 inch i'm guessing how long they are All right, what I'm gonna do to clean these corners up is I'm using a DA sander because I do body work and stuff. And I have these, you can use like these little uh, nine degree grinders with like an 80 grit. That's what I got, I got the Velcro 3M purple. I think it's Cubitron, I can't remember. We'll link them in there. This stuff works really good. I like the Velcro because if you drop it on the floor and stuff, it don't pick up dirt and you can't reuse it. So it's what I'm gonna use just to clean these edges up and we'll wipe them off and we'll get the welding. All right, we're gonna go over here and get our machine going. Now we're doing uh, 22 gauge, and I looked on my chart over here, and it looks to be about uh, 25 thousandths is what it is. And usually the rule of thumb is uh, one amp per thousand. So right now we're on 117, so at 25 thousandths, we'd wanna set this optimally at, at 25 would be rule of thumb. I'm gonna set it at about 40 since I got the pedal, so you know on the pedal, if you push it up, mat it wide open, just like on the car, all the way bottom is gonna be 40. So I'm gonna keep, cause I'm gonna, first I'm gonna show you guys how to do a, now this is a perfectly butted up, no gap whatsoever. And we're gonna try to do fusion tacks on this, no filler at all. The, the other ones I cut, I'm gonna put a, a gap about the width, which will be 045 width. And we're gonna do it, show you what, you're gonna have a gap sometimes, but optimal if you can do no gap spend the time fit it up this is what you want all right guys real quick i'm gonna show you how we set our uh, gas flow and stuff on i got my pedal over here and i <clears throat> got my torch over here i'm just gonna hang it over because what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna hit the you can see i don't know if you can see the readings or not it's a 10 20 30 40 50 that's your argon chart there all right what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna bump the pedal and you're gonna see the ball come up and you just adjust this valve right here to, uh, we're gonna set it at about 25. That's 30 or 20. So you just bump the pedal one time. All right, that's about 25 CFH. So we're set. All right, guys, I got to clamp down where it won't move, and I got it as tight a gap as we can get it. Like I said, this is just for demonstration purposes. A lot of time in the real world, you're not gonna get it this tight, but really strive the best you can to get as tight as you can so i'm gonna uh, try to set the phone up before i can get it here close to it so i'm gonna have the phone in one hand the tig in the other hand and i'm gonna do a fusion tack here and then we're gonna do another one here and then i'll get you a couple different angles and we're gonna skip about every inch now once with one good thing with tig once you get every inch or so you can come back and you can burn this thing the whole way and it's gonna warp a little bit anytime you add heat to metal whether you're mig or tig it, it shrinks it so it's gonna pull it in in the middle, but the beauty with the TIG is it seems to hammer it's a little softer and it hammers a lot better and you can get it back out. So you can see right now, she's pretty flat, but you'll see when we weld it, it's gonna cup up like a Pringle tater chip and we're gonna hammer it back out and flatten it back down. So here we go. All 
right guys well i tried it down there it's been a while since i've worked this thinner stuff i dropped it down to 28 amps and that seems to be better i blew through up here it just wanted to chase away from it so that's why it's good to have these practice panels here so it just chased away so let's see if we can get another one down on this end here and uh it's at 28 amps i'm gonna go in there and floor it at 28 and i guess i was trying to be a little hot on it heavy footed so i'm gonna clamp it down here you can see where it's up a little bit all right here we go there we go that's a good looking fusion tack right there So let's get us another one up here. All right, well, let's pull this off real quick and see how it looks on the back side. Yeah, you can see we got 100% penetration, but the thing is with this, let's get over here and see if we can, uh, got just a little warp, but see there is no buildup. We can hammer this back flat. And uh, right now I'm probably gonna come back, I'm gonna put, I'll show you guys, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna do my one every inch. We've got one here, we'll split it here, and then split another here, and then probably another one here. And then uh, we'll look at, you can see it's got a little bow to it, not real bad. And uh, we'll get them other tacks on here. I'll go up here and fill in that hole where I boo-booed it, had it on too much heat. And uh, we'll hammer it back flat, and uh, then we'll do a full pass on this. guys got all these texts and you can see back here where i had to add just a little bit i had a big old hole down here and and you can see look look at the heat i was in it probably a little too much but you can see up here where i've done these you know they didn't really give any heat at all off i mean it's you can touch you get down here it starts getting a little warm up here it's i mean it's not even hot at all i can lay my hand right on that's what you want keeps a lot of that warp out so now i'm gonna show you how i hammer and dolly it and get it back true that's what you're going to want to do is you do this process you don't want to wait to the end to try to chase all this out get it because we take this clamp off and it's got a little bit of where i goofed down there at that hole but we'll get over here and i'll get you set up and i'll show you and what we're going to do is we're just going to put the dolly on the bottom side and just go down through here and work it with the hammer on top and basically what you're going to do is you're going to spread this weld back out and when the when it releases because right now it's shrunk and it's kind of tight like that when you hammer it it just releases back down and that panel will come down like that so let's do that real quick the hammer i'm using today is my old trusty it's taped together i love it. it's old snap on i don't know how old it is it has very little crown it's almost dead flat and i'm going to use this old cheap uh kits that you get like at the swap meets and stuff i need to block these and make them nice but i'm gonna use this flat side here and we're just gonna do the hammer on technique we're gonna we're gonna just tap it till you hear that tinging That's pretty good right there. It's back pretty flat. We'll set it on here and check it. But... All right, now that we got our tax every inch or so, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna burn this whole thing in, but I'm gonna do what they call pedal pumping. And I, I'll video my foot, but what you do is you basically, you'll floor it and get it, uh, get your pedal form and you just back about halfway off. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the torch so you can see my foot. I'm gonna take the torch and it's gonna be floored get my puddle in it. And when I go to move forward, I'm gonna let halfway off and I'm gonna move only about a half, just a half a puddle. And then I'm gonna come back in and move forward and come back in and move forward. It's something you gotta get used to. It's kind of like a sewing machine if you think about it. 
because you're going to melt the material, you're going to ease off up and just move about half of the puddle because the puddle will be round. You just move about half forward to floor it again, half forward to floor it again. So I'm Right, guys that's about half of it right there that's about as far as i could go but that's a good four inches i could have kept going but i wasn't uh, set up good but, but yeah you can see how it's rose up a little it's peaked in the middle from the heat but that cup you can see what kind of shielding it's getting the width of it that's not too bad so that'll hammer dolly out pretty good I hope you could see that. It's kind of hard. I couldn't hardly see my gap. I was so far away from it, but the wells don't look as good, but that's because I couldn't see. It's low amperage. You really got to, I'll tell you what, if I was just welding this here, I would have my face shield right down on this. The better you can see, the better off you are, but... There's 100% penetration. Heat effect sounds not now it got really wide down here because I had to try to fill this hole in right here. So uh, you can see how much it, it peaked. That's no problem. Warps are not that big of a deal. Like I said, you can hammer and dial it. Like I said, we took a lot of it out getting the other, but it's got a little bit to it, so now we're going to let it cool off just a tick and we're going to hammer and dial it, but it's got a real nice finish to it. No filler rod whatsoever. That's the ultimate way to do it. But like I said, you have to really work hard to get a, it's hard to get that gap. Sometimes you can get areas that's got this good gap and you can weld it, then you just gotta put some filler, but it's no biggie. Just practice, practice, practice. Uh, the next one we're gonna do, I'm gonna do filler. I'm gonna put a little gap to it. So I'm gonna show you what, how to do that if you need to. And uh, we'll be finished up. All right, guys, we've got our dolly set up on our gloves to hold that good and still. See, we got that uh, where it shrank in the middle and peaked it up like that. We're gonna hammer right out. So, basically, what it did, it, when we welded it, it was flat. When we welded it, it kind of drew in there, dead in the center. It shrank it. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay it back on this dial. We're gonna hammer it back out flat and relax it. So, all we're gonna do is I'm just gonna hammer it straight like this, and I'm gonna take my other hand and move it back and forth, almost like a little power hammer or something. But and then we're just gonna keep hammering. You don't have to get real heavy handed on it, don't just good nice taps because you can you can overwork this area and then it starts doing all kind of weird stuff when you ever stretch it but just take your time with it see we're not beating it really hard we're just doing that little tinging and you can see it's starting to bring a lot of that out of it. So we're just going to keep going until it relaxes all the way. And we're just hammering dead center down the weld. Pretty good. I have the ham and it a little bit. Let's see what it does on the... And 
plant it. I mean, you can, if you had a little planishing hammer, I mean, that's basically what we was just doing with that one. But if you had a little planishing hammer, you could planish every drop of that out. But could you imagine if that was a, a repair panel on your car? I mean, high bill primer would almost fix this. Now, fusion welds, you're gonna have just a little undercut, not much. And you really, I don't think you have to pedal pump it. I like to do the pedal pumping, but you may be able to just lock it into a, just a even uh, bead down through there. But I like to pedal pump because it, it kind of takes some of the heat out of it because you're going cool to hot, cool to hot. Or not cool, but it warms up a little bit. But you can see my heat affected zone's not too bad. That's top, that's the bottom. Full penetration. You could probably hammer this and run this through the English wheel, put crown in it, or whatever you need to do. So now we're gonna put the gap. I've got it set up here, and this is the 045 wire. And I, all I done was just set that in there like that to get the gap. Now 045 is probably a little more than you're gonna want. I would say maybe a 23 would be, but this is like your uh, biggest that I would probably attempt. So we're gonna tack it the same way. I'm gonna come up here with filler rod this time. The 045 so I'm gonna tack it here and tack it here and run back and forth till we get an inch and then we're gonna burn it through and we'll see how good it hammers out just as a comparison uh, now I'm probably gonna take it up to about I'm gonna say uh, let's do 33 that way I got a little bit extra I don't want to go all the way to 40 out there let's try 33 and see if that'll be enough to melt that rod and stuff and we'll just see we'll try not to go all the way up to the max if we can help it all right, we're gonna go in here, we're gonna get our puddle going and we're just gonna put one little drop of rod in it just to hold it together. We don't wanna stay in there too long because you'll get your heat up too quick, so. Right, what you do, I don't know if you can see it good enough through the camera, but what I'm doing is I'm laying the filler rod in here and just kind of washing over it. And that way we're not trying to melt all the way down through. So we'll try it up here again. All right, you can see when we take this off how much warp comes into it. It actually is almost, it has a warp this way and it rolls this way. So we're gonna, we're gonna hammer that out. Get her back resting flat before we come in and start welding it together. Can't even get this to weigh them. Let me take my temperature back down. All right, we're back down to 25 now. Let's move on down here for the heat or not. Yeah, 
Yeah, much better. I gotta reposition my hand, it's getting kinda hot. Alright guys, you can see it's not impossible to do that big of a gap. I'd say if you're going to try, I'd keep around an 023 gap, but it just, it's easy just to blow out. It don't look as good and stuff, but I'm going to finish trying to weld. I'm going to fill this mess in here I made here where I had too much heat going, but you can already see it's starting to get a real wonky twist to it and stuff, and we're going to be able to hammer that out, but it's, it's pretty warm. I can touch it right now just so much heat input right there. I got my other piece here. But... If you want to look at the difference in it, it's just so all over the place. But like I said, it is easier. I just wanted to show you the comparison. I mean, you can weld the gaps up, but it's just, I want to show you how much easier it is if you don't have a gap, if you can get by with it. I will say I did do better that time instead of the pedal pump and it actually looks pretty good so that's what practice is all about the more you do it the more you can figure it out so let me fill this hole in then we'll do it without the pedal pumping down here too see how it does I may have learned something on my sheet metal. Doesn't look too bad. It actually looks better than that other mess I did, so arm percent penetration still looks good. Alright, well there she is guys. Uh looks pretty good. Look how tiny those little welds are. I think it looked good. I learned something on camera while I was filming. Uh, never think you got it all figured out because I learn all the time. I try to keep an open mind and try different things, but what I done on this, I'm gonna simulate it real quick, is instead of the pedal pumping on this one, on these Titan, it works really good for this, is I just got my puddle going, and I just come down through here and just slowly went, and just dab, 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 just like that, all the way down through here, steady speed. And it seemed to work out really good. I mean, that's a 045 gap right there that was in it. It's got 100% penetration. Uh, one thing with the filler rod before we hammer it is we're going to have to take the grinder. That's the only thing I like about it. I'm going to take just a little 80 grit roll lock, knock the top off, and I may do the bottom too, just any really high spots, and then we'll dolly it real quick. All right, what we're going to do, you don't, you want to be careful doing this. A lot of people, I've seen them ruin panels, especially with the MIG because it builds up so much. You just want to take this run on top of the weld. You're not trying to grind this outside material. Just we're just taking the tops the best we can off the weld, so. Yeah. 
And also, you want to watch when uh, grinding this stuff. A lot of people don't realize is you don't want to grind this stuff till it turns blue because you'll warp the panel up pretty bad by grinding and putting more heat in it. So it's starting to get a little warm to the touch. So we're going to let it stay here and cool off a little bit. I may address this area out here just a little bit more. And uh, I'll hit some of these super high spots and then we'll go to hammering. All right, well, here it is after it ground down. Like I said, we didn't take much down. We just wanted to knock the tops off of it a little bit. And uh, we're going to set up and hammer it real quick. Well, that's her, guys. That's not too bad. Got a little peek to it. You can manipulate it a little with your hand and, and get it the way you want it, but. That's your two pieces, both are fine. But I really dig the Fusion well better. Cause it wouldn't take anything just to dress this up real quick. Get that done, so. That's how I do it, guys. I hope that helped you out. All right, well, here they are. Turned out pretty good. Like I said, the one with the filler, we had to grind down a little bit to do a little more hammering. It needs a little more grinding, but you just look at that fusion one and just see what kind of results you can get by really tight fit. Like I said, now that's not gonna happen every time. You're not gonna get, it's hard to get a perfect fit. You always strive to get the best you can, but you see the results you can get. But even if you have a gap, now that was the 045 gap, and it done pretty good. It some of that ugly looking stuff is my fault where I I was experimenting as I was going. Alright guys, hope y'all enjoyed that video right there on how to TIG weld thin sheet metal. If you have any questions or want to know anything else, just drop them down in the comment. Make sure you like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And I want to thank you guys for staying around to the end because you guys are my core group. Remember, be kind to one another. Jesus loves you, so do we. God bless. We go.